Do you think they're more likely to pick up Enigma now that the silencer has been banned out? I mean, it's possible though, because I've been talking about whether you don't want to let the Visage like go away, like free farming. Take a tr if you pick Enigma, you're taking a trade because Enigma and Visage are both greedy supports. And you're actually trading, I think it's even more or less evenly. Maybe Visage is actually slightly much stronger because Visage transitions better into the late game with physical damage, and Enigma is just like a utility based <laughs> support hero here. They actually go for the Dazzle. This is just a typical secret lineup. Yeah. Like, everyone gets their more or less comfort hero. They have a very good balanced draft, good team fight, minus armor for Dire side, being able to take Roshan, good defensive play, good initiative. Thing, good laning phase as well. Comfort heroes. Everybody's basically on their, if not most comfortable, one of their most comfortable heroes for secret. Drow Ranger. And nope, they do go for this. They saw it coming last time. I think that was their final ban last time. Paul, I guess we are down to 18, right? We're down to 18 heroes wait, not played. Drow has already been picked once. Oh, already been yeah, picked. Yeah, already been picked once. So, still 19, but very close indeed. So, first time at the main event. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Let's go down and Virtus Pro. That's right, the early favorites of this tournament, Team Secret, who many had taking that first place slot, is actually down to just one game, two elimination. Of course, they're facing up against Virtus Pro, a team that has the whole entire CAIS region pride behind them. I mean, VP aren't slushes. They've consistently been one of the top five teams, in my opinion, in the entire world. They play a consistent style that's incredibly hard to break. They have one of the most consistent mid laners in Dota. I think a few players at ESL even called them top three. And they've got a support duo that will rival any as FNG and Lil. They're active. Now, Virtus Pro chose to go with almost the exact same draft as game number two. Very similar play style, even with the last pick difference here. Why do you think VP choose to go pretty much the same thing? I think that... Secret are a team that kind of struggle against the Storm Spirit. Uh, it seems like most teams pick Storm Spirit against them and it works because they pick really greedy cores. They don't like to pick the offlaner that has a lot of control to work with. Uh, for example, the Sand King or the Earthshaker, like you'd see an Empire pick. And so the Storm really thrives against that and they pick greedy supports at the same time. Like they don't pick control supports and that really hurts them. And BP, I mean, they've gone for a lineup which is incredibly strong at getting into team fights. They pick Lil his best hero, they pick FNG his Lina again. Like these are all comfort heroes for VP. And certainly, and this time around they actually have an insane amount of pushing power thanks to the Draw Ranger last pick that will combo so well with the Visage. All things considered, Virtus Pro, uh, things are a little bit different for Team Secret this, this time around. They did pick, uh, first of all, they picked a very defensive support in Dazzle. A lot more lane oriented, a lot more early game focus. VP just gonna push Team Secret out here and actually force S4 into a blink level one. That's a, a good start for G, right? Oh, it definitely is. And it's gonna help them out quite a lot. And this mid lane though, it's still probably favored for the Queen of Pain. Even though you have the blink level one, it's gonna mean that FNG rotates in and helps G even more. Uh, but the Queen of Pain still has kill potential, like we've said before in the past. Once she hits level 6 before the Storm Spirit does, it's incredibly hard to work with, but... I might take that back, because Storm has the Precision Aura to work with at the same time. Right. That changes everything. Yeah, it may not seem like much, but an extra 5 damage can actually mean all the difference in a 1 versus 1 matchup. Queen of Pain is usually supposed to have the uh, attack damage lead over the Storm Spirit, but that extra bit... VP may have the advantage in the middle lane. They are kind of leaving bottom lane open, though. Uh, we're actually seeing Team Seeker run a dual lane, a puppy on the Dazzle, paired up with Zai's Darkseer, pushing very aggressively into the Draw Ranger Visage combo. This is going to force the Lina down here, and this isn't the most efficient kill combination, because there's no setup stun. FNG pretty much just has to guess. He doesn't even have a level of his stun quite yet. You've got the Grave Troll from Lil, but it's not efficient when you've got a Surge on the other side from Secret. So it's really just going to come down to whether or not FNG can get level 2 at a reasonable time, and if he manages to hit the stun at the same time. Still at the same time, because there is dual lanes, DK Phobos may have an easier time in top lane. He's facing up against Kuro's Rubik and Arteezy's Shadow Fiend, a safe lane farming SF. Um, specifically, why are we seeing the SF in the safe lane over the Queen of Pain? I think they would have just preferred the Queen of Pain to get uh, more aggressive on G mid, and it's one of those heroes that is really safe to play with. Like, Storm is really hard, uh, it's really easy to kill, but at the same time, it's incredibly hard for Storm and to kill. G? 
He's actually kind of caught here. Zai's going to try and run him down with a go surge. Down. He's going to pick up the first blood here. Yep, there goes the right click. Now he will be a bit far forward. Vernus Pro may be able to turn around on him. They need the slows. They're not going to have enough. The Darkseer taking enough to survive through that one. FNG, rather uncharacteristic mistake in the laning phase by him, just being too far forward against Darkseer. And that's really significant because a Dro isn't farming at all, and she expected to have free farm here, and the Darkseer getting that first kill by himself at the same time is really going to help his progression. Like he already has the soul ring, and this means that he can get aggressive on this bottom lane, and they can pretty much push both supports out of it relatively easily. And Illidan has to keep up and farm with Arteezy because Arteezy getting a lot of farm here means so much more. Puppy, gonna be slowed down, Light Striker Ray does land, he's got the Shell Grave and will get it off in time. Virtus Pro are just gonna slowly run him down though. He gets the last little heal, but it's not enough. So despite Secret picking up the first blood, they do already give a kill to Illidan. And yeah, this mid lane, S4, now that he has the high ground advantage, he's really starting to win the lane and this is gonna prompt G to just go for the stack. He's actually gonna miss it, but... He still doesn't really want to stand on the bottom side of the hill, because it just means that S4 can go for the dive on him. So with all this pressure at the bottom lane, it seems like VP have to keep their two supports here, but at the same time, we need help in middle, we need help at the top lane. I mean, Team Secret can just leave the SF solo against the Earthshaker, and he can easily zone out DK Phobos. Yeah, now that he just got two levels of the raise, it's incredibly easy for them to set up for a kill. Kuro is just waiting for it right now, and he can be patient, and he can afford to be patient because the Earthshaker isn't really going to come up here to contest the Shadow Fiend. Uh, both of them have boots, but at the same time, it's really easy for them to set up for a kill on DK Phobos, especially when he's using his mana just to set up for the Fissure Blocks. And at bottom, again, this Joe just continues to struggle to get CS. So, in the end, do you agree with the two supports? Every single lane needs help in a way. Do you agree with their decision to put priority on Illidan's farm rather than maybe playing a bit more offensively and going and trying to gank mid or even top lane? Sort of, because by opening up the other lanes, that means that Puppy would actually have to rotate in and FNG doesn't get that stun off. But I don't think Lil was close enough for them to follow up anyways. This bottom lane is going to be impossible regardless. Because with that soul ring that he got from the first blood, he's just going to double Ion Shell and force Illidan back. And Illidan hasn't, doesn't have the region to deal with this. Uh, they got the silence on Zai. It will run out eventually, though. He'll get the surge. FNG is hoping to be able to get close enough for the Light Striker. Right? They're actually still close enough for a Cold Arrows. Maybe FNG can land this one. He's going to turn around with the double Ion Shell. Go straight for Lil. He's going to be able to pick up the kill. Unbelievable play oh, by no Zai. Way. He might even get out. out. He held potions up. Trying to dodge. Trying oh, to get the kill. Out. FNG almost there. Gets the kill. Two for one by Zai! What kind of monster are you, Zai? Straight Savage goes for the double kill on both supports. I mean, you just asked if it was worth it for the supports to stay down there. No, it's not. Certainly not it anymore. And look at this, S4. G is not level six. S4 has the infinite room. He's gonna start putting some pressure. Never mind. I thought with maybe Puppy coming in from the side, but Puppy actually, uh, this is rather interesting. He uses a ward to block up the hard camp. We don't see this too often, especially this early on into the game, but they know how critical the Strong Spirits farm is this game, so he's just trying to limit that as much as possible. Man, uh, that bottom lane though, you even saw Zai kind of fake it out. He's like, do I actually go for this? He's like, yeah, I go for this. I'm gonna get a kill. And that sure just enough. opens up the map so much. This means that FNG has to rotate out of it because they no longer want to be in this bottom side of the map. But look at Illidan. He doesn't have any more region to deal with this at all. And this is going to mean that at some point, I can probably just go for the dive on him if he has a TP. With... Which means it's going to be of critical importance that Virtus Pro hold on to TP skulls at this point. But I actually don't see any of their supports. They can't just straight up afford it. That's the problem. This is not what you want to happen, especially for Alina, who relies on the setup su stun for the Light Strike Array. She doesn't have boots quite yet. They're incredibly poor. They're not going to have map vision for a little bit, at least. They've still got that ward at that bottom lane, but it doesn't mean anything because Zai being there doesn't really reveal any information, and Secret don't really have to go for the gank at that bottom lane. Like, they can choose to smoke if they want to, but they'll probably move in for this bottom lane and then take the tower. Try and chain stun S4, they get the Fissure, no, they couldn't get it up. S4 is actually gonna get away, no, the right click is there. God actually gets the kill. He's run out of mana though. Little bit of a jump, can he stay ahead of Arteezy? Another right click is gonna bring him low, but they can't quite get it. So critical that VP actually got that kill on S4 and did not lose G in the process as they're already a little bit down in the laning phase.
That would pick up the kill and even it up three to three. That would have meant so much. I actually don't know how they recover if G dies there too, but uh, they managed to get a ward down here somehow. The observer ward blocking out G's camps and it's right. going to mean a lot to the storm Stormstreet who's already struggling in this mid lane. Uh oh, Illidan in some trouble. Actually, gets a good silent on S4. They need to try and pop it with a pitcher there. They'll do it. S4 too aggressive. And now, well, Zai, he's going to have to surge away. There's no Fissure Block, though, so no opportunity for a secondary kill. But Illidan staying alive through that and getting the kill on S4. Huge. Now he's got a Morbid Mask. He can actually spend some of his time jungling and leave the bottom lane optional for Lil to farm up and get his level 6. Oh, and mid. They go for it, but that was close. GC is coming in. That's really significant. That's back-to-back -back deaths. That's really tilting. You use two, P uh, two TPs for that. And at the same time, it just slows you down so much when it comes to farm. Right. He was keeping even in net worth with the Storm Spirit, but after that, he dips almost a f 800 gold behind him at just the 8 minute mark. And this is a lane that, in some ways, you should still have a decent size lead in. Mm -hmm. like, you can still be at least close to the Storm's net worth, but death after death isn't going to be able to complete it. And that just helps Illidan so much in that bottom lane. DK Phobos is farming up his soul ring. Trying to get that sustain that will allow him to full time jungle. FNG is actually getting a little priority too. He's farming up the off lane. And uh, obviously, we're trying to get that Laguna Blade ready to go. So they have a lot more kill potential against some of the very squishy heroes on the side of Team Secret. I feel like they're relying quite heavily on Puppy to pull a lot of Shallow Grave saves in this game. Yeah, they might opt to go for the mech on our tour at some point, but he might just decide to go for the Yule Sub Crusher. And at top, they're going to try to chase down FNG. Turns around, FNG doesn't have a good blade, but he still gets the combo on Arteezy and gets a good amount of damage. Artur, though, does have 